I'm going to talk about the exact way DownTube started. At first, you know, I got these accounts at an interbike show in Philadelphia. And then I actually stored almost all the stuff and I was selling everything in my math department office at Temple. It's like the whole DownTube was based on math.temple.edu tilde slash tilde yon. And just at the point I was about to get in trouble, I switched over to down to got all the stuff out of my office. It was, it was good, you know. So I didn't get officially kicked out of school at the time. And I worked like a dog. It was funny. Like, and I think I made at most 20000 a year. And like, like a knucklehead at the time, I didn't keep all receipts. I ended up paying more in taxes than I was supposed to. I learned how to do taxes at that time, unfortunately, in, in, in a negative way, you know, because I, I screwed myself, um, but no big deal. And then, um, you know, eventually it got to the point where I was spending so much time and I, I, it was just taking an enormous amount of time and I wasn't making any money on it. You know, it, it was really weird. And I decided to down to let it go for a while. And it was kind of cool, you know, so I, I let it go, you know. And after, after I let it go, I understood DownTube would be instantly successful if I ever reopened it because I understood this whole concept, even though no one ever told me, I understood I just need a business model. I need a business plan. You know what I mean? I guess I had a business model. I need a business plan. And I, I realized that in my head. And I was like, ah, you know, I stopped. I'm good. I'm not going to restart it anytime soon. You know, no big deal. I was, I was satisfied. I was happy. But I knew if it was ever time, I, I could do it, you know? And it was really funny because after I got my PhD, I worked at Villanova University in the computer science department, even though I'm a mathematician. And I thought I earned a tenure track position at Villanova. And to this day, I'm gonna have to say, I'm thankful that they didn't give it to me. And to be completely honest, I definitely deserved it, you know, and I couldn't understand, you know, so I was there on a visiting basis and, you know, I talked to a chair and he told me that they would continue my employment on a visiting basis as, as long as I wanted, you know, but they hired somebody else for a tenure track position and he wanted to see how I respond. And it was really funny because I didn't respond. I just got up and walked out of his office. I was, I was out. I, was out. I, I thought in my mind, it was a ridiculous injustice. And I, I stand by that. It, it was just absurd. And that was it. And it, it was just hysterical that I had no money. Like after that job, I spent all the money on redoing my house, had no money, didn't, you know, it's like, oh man, this sucks, you know? And I'm like, man, I, maybe I can go back to Villanova. <laughs> And they were going to take me back after you, you walk out on somebody like that. It's, it's, it's over. And um, I started down to again, only because of the injustice they provided. And after a few months, I was like, I was generating enough to pay the bills minus health insurance. You know, I was actually losing money on health insurance. Every month I was going more and more debt, into debt. But then after six months, I found a way, like I, I'm just gonna be honest, I was netting about $1,000 a week. So it was more than I was making when I was teaching at the time. I, was, I got this stupid job teaching at the Virgin Islands. I mean, it's, it's really weird. <laughs> and so I just started, I'm just figuring things out. And I was, you know, netting the substantial income. Like, I think I have something with this. And then, you know, went gung-ho, looked for three things. It was like, what's the best, biggest disequilibriums in the market? You know, well, you know, bicycle wheels at that time were ridiculous, a huge disequilibrium. You know, pedals, pedals were selling like hotcakes. Suspension was crazy good, you know, for, for mountain bikes. I knew mountain bikes. You know, so I was trying to research all these different companies to see if I could import any of these products, either wheels or pedals or forks. And it turns out you can kind of get them, but it's always price fixing nonsense in the industry. It's really weird. But, you know, it was kind of complicated. It was a little complicated. I could have gotten the stuff, but it wasn't going to be simple. 
And then I, I decided to look at folding bikes too, because Dahan bikes were selling like hotcakes at that time. I was like, let's do our own. And uh, I did. And I brought in our first bike and it was in the Virgin Islands, I was testing it. So I called it the VI bike for six speed. VI is Roman numeral six. And it's also, you know, Virgin Islands is VI. And it was in all objective, like, I'm just going to be honest. I thought it was a really bad bike. <laughs> it's really, it was made out of steel, you know, steel. It was really heavy. It was a pretty crappy bike. And the factory that put them together was the worst. It was, it was Oyama. It was really ridiculous. And I don't remember how many bikes I got, but I think it was like 130, 140, something like that, 150. It was a 20 foot container. So I ended up taking every bike out of the box and I redid every bike. And after I redid them, they were okay. You know, they weren't good, but they were okay. You know, to be good, you have to have nice frames, nice componentry, all that jazz. At least I got them set up right, you know. Every single bike, every bike. It's really it's a lot of time, you know. And I didn't think the bikes were that good. And I, I was like, I'm probably gonna lose money on these. I should lose money on these. These, 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 these bikes are, are not quality. And I actually made a few bucks. I don't know how much money I made on them. I mean, I made money. I assumed I was gonna lose, I, I didn't lose. It's like, this is interesting. If I can make money on these bikes, these VI bikes, which were just, you know, just, you know, just a shot across the bow, just a test. It's like, I think we can do something with this. And then 2005, I got these full suspension bikes, which were nice. I mean, they were really good, good drive trains, good frames all around. They, they were just good bikes, a little immature in 2005, but they were good bikes. And you know, also I got the front suspension, but that's, that's not, that's not where it really, the full suspension was the one that everybody wanted. And literally within two years of that, I don't even know what happened to the business. It was huge. I mean, it was just crazy. We were grossing over a million dollars a year, sales out the yin yang here, there, every, everything we were doing was like, oh, this guy must be a genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not a genius. No worries. Um, but everything we touched was like unbelievable. And uh, yeah, and then you know, I'll continue a little bit further with, you know, so just things were like crazy. And then it was funny in 2008, you know, the recession hit, the great recession and sales were, were, were not so good. I mean, but in addition, I think I was ready to move on. Um, I was developing the website at a phenomenal rate in 2006, 2007, I was living in the Outer Banks and I was doing a really, really great job. We got on top of Google ranking or not just Google, but it was all these search engines back then. And we were at the very top of all the search engines. And then, you know, honestly, around 2008, I got, I just got lazy I was living in the Outer Banks. It was like, I was like, I got, I would say I got fat, lazy and stupid. I love, I love the Outer Banks. I really do, but it just didn't, it, it was time to go. And so I moved to the Bahamas and I became a full-time math professor and what I would consider honestly a full-time chess player, even though I wasn't, I, I, in my mind I was. Taking the kids to the beach every day, taking them to the playground every day. And, you know, the bikes took, took a back seat and I'm kind of, you know, in a sense happy they did. And so by the time I came back from the Bahamas, Sales were down about like 90% from when we left. It was really unbelievable. But that was okay. It was four years. It was, it was a nice little, it was a nice little break, actually. It was a little, you just stop, you know, just, you know, raise your kids, take care of the dogs, just a little break on life. And then came back to the US. And um, yeah, I kind of restarted down to a bit, not, not too actively. And now it's 2021. And in the past couple months, I've written over 100 blog articles and I'm publishing stuff at a phenomenal rate. And I cannot foresee anyone possibly competing with what I'm doing now. So I, I think long term, DownTube has quite a lot of viability, you know, 
at this point. So because the amount of work I'm putting in now is reflective with the work I put in, I would say around you know, 2006, 2007, when things just got ginormous. And I mean, if somebody's trying to compete with the content that I have, I mean, as people have been watching these videos at this point know, pretty knowledgeable. Not only am I knowledgeable, but my mind works. I can think and I can problem solve. And I, I, I just think it's going to be hard for anyone to compete with, you know, what we can bring to the table at this point long term. And that being said, this is, you know, the end of my, it's coming closely into my time running down to, um, but I will, you know, pass the baton in, in a proper way, which means it will never be sold because that would just compromise, you know, the, the down tube doesn't need debt. It needs to be, it needs to continue selling good stuff for cheap, you know, long-term. That's what it was started as. That's honorable. It's an honorable goal. And for me to cash out, to stop that, it would just be idiotic. Then, you know, it's like selling your soul. It's, I can't do that. So at the same time, it's not interesting for me to, to, to keep processing orders every day. So, you know, that's going away imminently. You know, um, I found a warehouse. They're going to be doing that nonsense for me. I'll still do sales, which, which I have to say is not as much fun as it was a decade ago. It was much more interesting, you know, like one or two decades ago, actually. So I'm, I'm going to get rid of that too. I'll still create content because I think that's a really cool thing right now. And the coolest thing is, I've been writing it or like, I, I've never considered myself a good writer. I think I'm a decent writer now. I mean, I, I, I'm sitting on the bike downstairs in the gym and I'm writing like five, 10 articles, like while I'm on the bike, it's like, that's really ridiculous. Never been able to do that before. Some are short, I'll admit. Some, you know, some are really short, <laughs> okay. But it, they're still interesting. You know, everything has some, some sense of curiosity. I wouldn't write something if it's not interesting at all. And so that's something, you know, writing for DownTube is something, you know, and, and revamping the entire site. I don't mean the blogs, which I've been going gung-ho. I figure I'll do the blogs for a few more months, like probably two more months, get a couple hundred more things in the blogs. That should be enough for, uh, you know, very long time. And then I'm going to move over to the frequently asked questions pages and completely revamp them to honor Sheldon Brown and to try to do things what Sheldon did. But I'm not going to say ever, not to be better than Sheldon. Sheldon is like the top of the top of the food chain here. So I, I don't want to be better than Sheldon. I just want to be a little bit different. You know what I mean? Um, just a little bit different. You know, throw in some videos because I don't think they have that. And just, just a little bit different. But a lot of information, not as, I love, go to SheldonBrown.com. I, I love him. Um, I, I love the website. I, I, I read about his family recently. I love his family. It's, it's, it's just awesome. But I think I have a lot of information to share and I would like to share that. And I think that's the most logical way. So once I'm finished with all these blog postings over another month or two, and then I'm gonna move over to frequently asked questions and completely revamp that and create essentially, you know, a book of knowledge on bicycles, AK also, you know, maybe folding bicycles. And hopefully that'll extend. So, you know, I've shared, I guess, the beginning of DownTube where it started, which is just ridiculous, right? Um, you know, where it's gone, the history. And, you know, my anticipation for the future. Thank you for watching.